Eisenberg with a rebound, struggle and a foul call. No traveling. Immediately, Maryland goes to its strength, the inside game. Kentucky is playing man-to-man -man defense, so Locke will take the biggest player, Williams, and the forwards, Lewis on the outside, got it by Manuel. Eric Manuel, one of four men who've started at that spot for Eddie Sutton this year. That's been the problem spot. There's Locke on balance, and it'll be Maryland ball. Keith Gatlin will inbound now to Rudy Archer, a junior college transfer from Allegheny Community College. He's been a real spark plug for Bob Wade's team. 166 assists in the regular season. This man with the ball right now is an exceptional outside shooter. Williams can't get the shot to go, but he is fouled by Rob Locke. Well, they're working right now quite effectively the matchup of Williams and Locke. Hoping that Locke will get in foul trouble. Here's Williams. He's a lefty. He goes up strong. Now, Locke is not what you'd call the most mobile of centers. Not great leaping ability, so they're going to test him to see if they can slip through and buy him or over him. Brian Williams continues his streak at the free throw line. He was five of six in the first round game. Out of Santa Monica, California, freshman center, one of the two most highly recruited high school centers a year ago. Gets them both, and it's a 5-4 game, 17.50 to go, first half. And Maryland will come up and press every once in a while, actively, to try and create some turnovers, but they're not as aggressive as a lot of the teams are in the tournament. Winston Bennett, Pops, the old man of the team. He's a fifth-year senior, now in graduate school. He gets the first two points for himself. Hitting the shots after only one or two passes, Kentucky, and uh, that's not quite what uh, Eddie Sutton would want. That hook shot a little short by Derek Lewis. Now Kentucky in transition and manual travel. Bob Wade up trying to settle his team down. Says something to Rudy Archer. Eddie Sutton in his third year. Eddie Sutton. Uh, I, I think is more of a defensive coach than a real offensive coach, and he really doesn't want his team to fast break a lot today. They don't, haven't done a lot of it during the course of the season. Massenberg is fouled by Winston Bennett. First foul on Bennett, second team foul on Kentucky. And a non-shooting ball. And Keith Gatlin will inbound. Gatlin, quite a story for Maryland, did not rejoin the team until January 6th. He was Lenny Bias's roommate. And after Bias's tragic death, Gatlin sat out of basketball for a year and a half. Has been a real spark plug. This is Gatlin with the ball now. That's his patented shot. That's for three. And you better stay right in his face because he's got such a quick release. He doesn't shoot a jump shot. He shoots like a Magic Johnson or a Larry Bird push-up. Gatlin hitting 49% from three-point range. He was 5-8 of eight in the first round game. That's Bennett for two inside the three-point arc. Uh, he has been coming off and been virtually wide open at the 15-foot range, and they'll have to get in his face at that distance because he'll kill you. Gatlin with Chapman guarding him. Picked off by Davender. It's a one-on-two, but he goes all the way anyway, and he'll shoot a couple as he does not get the bank shot. Eddie Davender, a quiet young man from Brooklyn, New York, played at the same high school where Pearl Washington had played. Third team, all SEC, and, and just had a wonderful game here in the first round against Southern. Well, what he does is he, got, he has the ability to really run this ball club. The only thing in this game I think that's missing is a real solid outside shot. But he does all the other things so well. He passes the ball well. He runs the uh, the team offense. He reads the game situations. And he may not look like Superman, but he is. He's an 86% free throw shooter. That's the first. A lot will be on his shoulders today to control the tempo of this game the way Eddie Sutton wants it. So far, they've had three fast break opportunities. When I said... Eddie Sutton perhaps doesn't want him to fast break. He wants to play conservative basketball and defend as few possessions as possible. 11-7 score. 
Tied at two once, but Kentucky's been in control since then. That's Eric Manuel to Rex Chapman. Oh, that little zone press just burned Maryland. Massenburg with a foul. That's his first, second team foul on the Terrapins. Massenburg, another who sat out of the wake of Money Bias' death. He missed all of last season. Massenburg and Gatlin both played in the NCAA tournament out in Long Beach in 1986 when this team lost to UNLV. Chapman. Got an elbow being thrown. Excellent plays. And Eddie Sutton's offense. Good motion. And they'll set a lot of double screens for Chapman to come off to get the outside shot or for him to catch the ball and go strong to the basket. First substitution of the ball game now. Massenburg quickly pulled from the game. And Dave Dickerson, the junior from Olar, South Carolina, goes in for Bob Waite's team. Davender baseline jumper. And the rebound pulled out by Derek Lewis. 11-7, 15-44 to go. Brian Williams, strong move off the glass. And that's the weakness, perhaps, of Kentucky's defense once it gets up the court is locked. He just doesn't have the good foot movement to follow the ball around and get in the passing lane against the big guy. Basket by Chapman, and it's 13-9. We want to remind our viewers in Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, and Virginia but they'll be leaving us in a few minutes to see Richmond versus Georgia Tech. We'll keep you up to date on the progress of this game with scoring reports and highlights. 13-9, Gatlin takes the jumper. Whistle before the tap-in, and the foul on Derek Lewis. That's his first, fourth team foul on Maryland. Well, you can see already that that little thing that happened against Southern their inability to rebound against Southern. Eddie Sutton has talked to these guys because they're putting some vicious blocks on these Maryland big guys. Really interesting, Tommy, because Kentucky in that game shot 67% from the field. I think he might be happy, but he was so upset about the rebounding that he didn't find much to uh, smile about in that win. Well, that's what wins in the tournament game, too. Good guard play and rebound. Archer nips it away from Rex Chapman. Here's Archer in transition. Kicks it out to Gatlin, and Chapman does a good defensive job on him. Lewis a little too far out. 13 to 9, under the 15 minute mark. They try the law pass. Manuel goes back, and here comes Kentucky. Dabble. Offense, defense. Defensive foul. That's the first on Gatlin, the fifth team foul. Sellout crowd on hand at Riverfront Coliseum. This is a predominantly Kentucky crowd, only an hour and a half away from Lexington. And the Kentucky Wildcats have an early four-point lead, 14.30 to go in the Southeast region second-round game. Tempo for Kentucky has been upbeat, but not as wild as it was in that first game against Southern. And that's what really concerned Eddie Sutton, too. Now, wild rushes up and down without any real thought of getting back on defense, blocking out on the boards, and more concentrating on offense than the other facets of the game. That's why I want to get their heads back into this tournament. you got to play all the parts of the game. What's that, guys? Kentucky was 63% so far, Maryland 38%. Those things should even out a little bit more as the game progresses. Davender doesn't get the second one. The lead is at five with 14.27 to go in the first half. Kentucky leads Maryland 14 to nine. Rudy Archer guarded by Eddie Davender. They've got Winston Bennett on Derek Lewis. There's Archer. And a blocking bell on Rob Locke. That's so, his second. So far, the interior defense of Kentucky's doing a pretty nice job. You see the right of your screen there denying it, but that opens up the angle to allow Archer to drive strong to the hoop. And the Locke a little bit slow at the feet, getting there late. That's what created the, the block. And uh, Eddie Sutton's going to make a move, go to his bench, and LaRon Ellis is going to come in for Rob Locke. So he'll get Locke out of there. Archer gets the first free throw. Here's LaRon Ellis, the 6'11 freshman from Tustin, California. And Rob Locke goes to the bench. 
the 6'11 senior from Reedley, California. Well, everybody tries to work Rob Lockover because he's not that mobile and he can't jump, but somehow or other he man manages to do a pretty decent job on defense if he doesn't get in foul trouble. Archers, two make the lead three. Kentucky's up 14-11. Okay, listen up. Oakley here is filling in the ball tonight. For three years, okay. Bill Oakley Thank took you. orders. Up the shelf plates, but tonight, hey, all the help we get. Are you with he's got to stand up and take charge. You make America work. Here's to you, the clean, crisp taste of Beechwood-aged Budweiser. For all the guys who know it's not what you say, but what you do. This for you. See this phone? This is my store. And for years, my store was at the mercy of AT&T. But now, with MCI, I finally have an 800 service that charges me only for the actual distance of the calls we get and can tell me where every one of those calls is coming from. And that makes this a better store. Until you call, you'll never know how much better a long-distance company can be. MCI, let us show you. At least once in your life, you owe yourself a car like One loss, and the dream dies. They call it March Madness. 16,000 plus on hand at Riverfront Coliseum, Kentucky, with a three-point lead, 14.09 to go. That is Darian Wade, the 11-year-old son of the head coach at Maryland, Bob Wade. Did his homework in advance for two weeks. So Pop would let him join the team in the NCAA tournament, and he could enjoy this without worrying about math lessons or geography. He's going to learn about geography if his dad's team continues to play well. Chapman will go to the free throw line. The foul is on Rudy Archer. You know, if I were Bob Wade's son, I'd be listening to him too. Once you look at him, but he's a soft-mannered man. And I'll tell you, he made a statement on how his program was going to be run just this very season by making sure that the two players, uh, Messenberger, Messenberg and uh, Gavin, would adhere to the academic principles that he wants to see. Now, that not only said something to those kids, but to everybody that anticipates coming into that program. Bob Wade, one of the most highly respected high school coaches in the country at Baltimore Dunbar, where during a five-year period, they lost one game. And how about Chapman missing a boat? It stays 14-11. Good tonight defense right now by Kentucky. is making them stuck. Maryland stopped the offense way further out. Excellent job by LeRon Ellis on Brian Williams then, freshman against freshman. Though I guess by this point of the year, you could almost call it sophomores. Manuel Short with a shot. Ellis to follow by Winston Bennett. So far, the Kentucky big guys are doing it to the Maryland big guys. It goes back to the point you made earlier. The game is going to be won or lost inside. I think the guards of both clubs match up pretty well and probably make the same kind of contribution. And it's really the big guys that are going to determine it. And on paper, you'd have to say that Maryland probably has the advantage there. But not so far. The largest lead in the game has been five. That's where it is right now. Underneath, whistle before the shot and a foul called on Winston Bennett. That's his second. Bennett is really making an all-out effort to get into the passing lane to front Lewis so that the Maryland guards can't get the ball inside. But that time he didn't follow where the ball went and he opened it on himself up to a pass right down the lane. That's 
the fourth team foul on Kentucky. Ellis goes up to get the rebound, and here comes Kentucky. Davender forces it up, but will probably settle into the half-court game. He does. What a great block out that time by Ellis. Ellis behind the back, saves it. Said hello to four Maryland cheerleaders. And then Bennett cans the 18-footer. LaRon Ellis in place of Rob Locke and two sparkling plays at both ends of the basketball court. And the largest lead of the game now at Brian Lewis. Ellis again got the foul, body contact. Maryland sets a lot of picks for their big guys to come to the ball. So you're always kind of a half a count late. But that time, Ellis, even though he was picked, got over there and it looked like he got a good piece of the ball. Brian Williams at the line, 66% free throw shooter on the season, but he's two for two today. You know what Maryland counts on, too, but is that a lot of motion down inside wears big guys down, and if they keep getting picked and picked and picked and blocked, all of a sudden they give up, and you can slip the ball in there. Misses two. Lead stays at 7, 18, 11, 12, 08. Winner of this game goes on to Birmingham, where they will face the winner of our next game, Villanova, Illinois. From the corner, that's for two, Eric Manuel. Uh, the outside shooting's working. They're hitting the boards. They're blocking out beautifully on a defensive board. And this predominant Kentucky crowd raises the Raptors. But they'll quiet after that shot falls. Dave Dickerson, not that much of a scoring threat. He's only averaging four points a game. He gets two. 20 to 13, 11 30 to go, first half. Skip pass. Davener in the corner. Underneath for Ellis, who asks for the ball and kicks it back outside. Nice pass to Manuel. Nice adjustment in the air. Winston Bennett. Well, they really found the diamond in one. They're keeping a man on Chapman and the rest of. The Kentucky players are having a field day. They're moving the ball beautifully as Maryland's concentrating too much on Chapman. Yeah, the three-pointer doesn't go, but Williams is there with the follow. Let's see if they adjust his defense now, Tommy, because Bennett has exploded for 10 points already. Well, they're going to keep man to man now. Right. That ball whipped underneath, Ellis. Archer and Gatlin, it's a two-on-two. Two. Archer tries to get by Emmanuel. Gatlin, three-pointer. Over the back, Dickerson. That's what happens when you have a good block out. If you lay a, a body on a man, and he is used to kind of getting in there all the time without anybody letting a body on him, the next thing you know, he comes over the top and you pick up easy fouls. With 10.32 still to go in the half, Maryland's seventh foul, so Kentucky already in the bonus. LaRon Ellis with some quality time here early in the game. His dad, I played against his dad, Leroy. Played for the Lakers, quite a player. Now an assistant coach at uh, USC under George Ravelin. Eric Manuel, another freshman at the free throw line. This is a 6'6 freshman from Macon, Georgia. Bob Wade goes to the bench. He'll bring Rodney Walker in, who's playing with a dislocated index finger. Winston Bennett goes out with 10 points. Richard Madison comes in. Derek Lewis is also going to get a blow now. I'll tell you, Winston Bennett really did an exceptional job defensively on Lewis. And at one point, I think Eddie Sutton, Sutton was thinking Emmanuel is going to play him most of the time. There is Winston Bennett, now in graduate school at the University of Kentucky. He got his degree in December. Whoops, Archer on the line. Chapman couldn't save it. Trying to bring the ball down the sideline against a very, very active pressure defense of Kentucky. Really testing Archer and Gatlin. Lead is nine. Foul away from the 
ball on LeVon Ellis, number 24. That's his second foul. So Ellis, Bennett, and Locke for Kentucky have two each. You know, when you're playing against a team that's determined to get the ball to a big guy, the defensive center is really under the gun. He really has to stay, keep a hand in the passing lane and, and, and know where the ball is, which means he has to move his feet continually so he can get that hand in the passing lane. Quick move, baseline. Rudy Archer gets two. He's got four in the game. And the lead is cut to seven. Williams with a rebound. Williams and LaRon Ellis. Archer gets the left-handed jump shot, hits it, that's for two. They set some pretty good picks themselves, Maryland bought. They'll shake anybody loose. Maryland's field goal percentage at 43 now, Kentucky just under 60. And a nine-point lead has been cut to five. Good fake by Ellis. Gets the shooter's roll. Sure was, and he, with that little fake, he rooted Williams. 9-0-5 go first half. Kentucky 26 and 5. Maryland comes in 18 and 12. But the Terrapins had a big win at Duke, a big win at Notre Dame, and a win in the SEC tournament over Georgia Tech that got them into the NCAA. Archer gets another. Looks like they're going other places for their offense right now than trying to get it inside to Williams. Chapman kicks out and uses his speed to drive the baseline and will go to the free throw line. Last year, Eddie Sutton gave this man the green light almost to shoot the ball anytime, any place he wanted. And this year, he's kind of changed it to an amber light. Be a little bit more selective on your shots. Rob Locke coming back in, playing with two fouls, and for Maryland, Rudy Archer. Now, this is the hands of LeVon Ellis. Did a good job in there. And very active feet getting into that passing lane, far more active than Locke was. So you may see Ellis back there again, and a little type of rotation trying to stop Williams. Chapman missed his last two, gets the roll on this free throw. Rudy Archer with three fouls now for Maryland, so he's gone to the bench. And Keon McCoy, a sophomore out of Hammond, Indiana, number 11, has taken his place. Now he's a fine outside shooter. There's Rudy Archer. And Chapman's only one of four from the free throw line. You can hear the murmur in the crowd. Oh, Gat Gatlin will run the offense now. He was a point guard in prior years, and they moved him to the two guard. But, but he can run the offense. Steve Hood has also come into the lineup for Bob Wade. Number 44, he's got the ball. Former starter. And he'll shoot a couple of free throws. He can put it on the floor and take it to the hoop. Uh, so much concentration on stopping the big guys that uh, leaves you little gaps, but there somebody steps in, they cut him off, cut off his attack angle, and he has to pull up, but he got banged from the side. Derek Lewis coming back in, so also is Winston Bennett, respectively for Maryland, Kentucky. And Dave Dickerson will go to the Maryland bench. At the line, Steve Hood, sophomore from North Carrollton, Maryland. 21 starts this year, but uh, when Gatlin came back, he saw less and less playing time. And some written reports in Maryland that he's a little disenchanted with his role and might. Uh, well, Gat uh, Gatlin will be graduating this uh, summer, so uh, loses eligibility anyway. And uh, this guy ought to be able to take his place and then some. And Bob Wade uh, has indicated he doesn't think Steve Wood is going anywhere except coming back to Maryland. 27-23, the Maryland Terrapins sticking in. They trail by four. 8-11 to go, first half. Every night while you're sleeping, UPS is maintaining its status as the only company that delivers overnight to every address coast to coast. And now we guarantee it. Introducing UPS Next Day Air Guarantee. And because we're so efficient, we'll still do it for up to half what other companies charge which is guaranteed to cause our competition some sleepless nights. 
UPS, we run the tightest ship in the shipping business. You hear the thunder, the call of the road. Whether it's the roar of an available turbo or 16-valve engine, Grand Am is sheer driving excitement. Get on the Pontiac and ride! Pontiac ride! And now, with $400 back direct from Pontiac, you can really cash in on Grand Am excitement. Get on the Pontiac! Rebuild excitement! In a battle drill, you need horsepower, firepower, people power, teamwork. Hey, where did you learn about computers? In the Army. You were in the Army too? Qualify for the GI Bill and the Army College Fund, hey, and you can earn over $25,000 for college. What you do in the Army? Airborne. You used to jump out of airplanes? Kentucky leading by four. Story of the game thus far, their interior defense. Sure is. And look lock at lock there. Left of your screen. He has to know where the ball is. Getting his feet moving. Trying to get that hand in a passing lane. Disturb the rhythm of the passer. And that's very difficult to do without fouling. He's picked up two. Now look at the other side as the ball goes over. Bennett trying to do the same thing against Lewis. That's what's been working very effectively. And then the block out. You're going to tell me Bennett was doing that without fouling? Ah, well, the referee didn't call it. That's right. Very tough to call those things inside like that, particularly when they're on the away side of the ball. Eight minutes to go, first half, Riverfront Coliseum in Cincinnati, the NCAA championship on CBS. Middle game of our triple header, Rob Rock misfires. Here comes Dion McCoy. What a great block out by Lewis. Let McCoy get the start. Feet not working quite quick enough as the ball got down the side and Locke couldn't cut off the angle of the pass. Locke got stuck in concrete. And Williams gets two more. Lead is two, 27-25. Early score, Richmond, Georgia Tech, the Spiders. And this will be over and back. That's the fourth Kentucky turnover, and Bob Wade's team has a chance to tie. Maryland just wears you down in that paint. They move, they move, they pick for each other, they lay a big body on you. They just had Walker in there, that big, huge guy. Imagine him laying a couple of picks on you, and you fighting through three or four times. You get worn out. Gatlin at the point now, and Keon McCoy kicks it back to Steve Hood. Chapman guarding Gatlin. Derek Lewis, offensive foul away from the ball. Oh, he's angry at Keith Gatlin for something. Here you're going to see uh, Bennett at the top of your screen, and he's going to get, he's following the ball now, trying to get up on top of the man. They're fighting for position. They just got feet entangled. I don't know if that was a foul or not. That's the second foul on Derek Lewis. One man they were worried about getting in foul trouble, Brian Williams, has played thus far with uh, with no fouls. He got only 23 minutes in the first round game because of foul trouble. Well, I think that uh, he will not get in foul trouble because he's guarding Locke, and Locke is not a real center of their offense. I mean, they're not going to pump that ball in there 10 times in a row to get Ro Williams in foul trouble. Bennett gets the first of the one and one, and the lead is back to three, 28-25. This guy is very important in this game. He has really gotten the job. I thought perhaps that Manuel would end up guarding Lewis, but it's Bennett, and he's done a pretty decent job. Here's the trap defense. Lewis, left side to Gatlin. Don't attack the basket. They don't have a shot blocker down there, and uh, lock. Gatlin. Davender switched off on him defensively. Williams fires it to Steve Hood. Manuel gets the rebound. Good read of the defense that time by Williams. But you gotta hit those dish back outs if uh, you're gonna keep getting the pass back out. 
Zion Williams made a bad gamble, went right over the top, trying to pick the ball off. A little bit too slow. And you're going to see the pass come in, and Williams trying to get in the passing lane, misses it, and that allows Locke to just wheel in all by himself. Locke's first two points put Kentucky back up by six. Largest lead of the game has been nine. Maryland has not left. It was tied at 2 all. McCoy looks for a pick on Davin and didn't get one, so he gives it up to Gatlin. Shot clock down to 13. There's the push shot from Gatlin. He hit his first one, but he's hit missed his last three. I'll tell you, though, he's right on that rim, and as soft a shot as that is, he'll get it back quick. 5.30 to go, first half. Bennett, that's his first miss from the field. He was 5 of 5, and Locke gets his third foul, and that'll put LeRon Ellis back in, I would think. Again, a good block out by a Maryland player this time on a defensive rebound. Put the man on your back first, and then go for the ball. And sometimes those aggressive offensive rebounders just create the foul themselves. Eddie Sutton Time wants out. to talk it over. He has called a Kentucky timeout. His team has a six-point lead. You hear the thunder, the call of the road. No time to wonder, you gotta go. Aggressively styled and power to match. That's Grand Am. And now, with $400 back direct from Pontiac, you can really cash in on Grand Am excitement. Get on your Pontiac! Rebuild excitement! Strength. Pride. Tradition. For centuries, the Clydesdale has been known as a special breed. Today, the Clydesdales symbolize Budweiser's dedication to quality, superior ingredients, exclusive beechwood aging, and a distinctively clean, crisp taste that only Budweiser can offer. Quality taste. Because this Bud's for you. Hey, sounded good. Save a few bucks, get the same quality. Then the gripes start from data processing. I got garbage all over the orders. Pittsburgh now takes all night to download delivery schedules. AT&T gives you the fastest, most error-free data transmission. I'm paying 32 truckers to drink coffee. This is a good deal? AT&T's worldwide intelligent network. Because we know it's not just long distance. It's your business on the line. AT&T, the right choice. She's determined and ready, and now Debbie Thomas gets one last chance to dethrone Katarina, the World Figure Skating Championships, next Saturday night. The Kentucky Wildcats have won five NCAA titles. That man played on a couple of championship teams. He's now the AD at Kentucky, and Tommy, an old uh, rival of yours in the NBA. Well, he played 10 years uh, in the NBA. And I played a lot of time against him when he was with the St. Louis Hawks. In fact, they beat us one year for the championship. And he had a hook shot, believe me, that was devastating. May not have taken it from the corner, but his was probably better than mine. I tell you, with Heinsohn and Hagen throwing hooks, who breaks had to be How did he Indians. get in there? Well, I just did. He all. was the best hook shooter of all, who breaks. Bob who breaks, he University of Washington. Like guys used to shoot long set shots, he'd shoot hooks from the corner. As Locke with the three personals. Rob Locke out, Leron Ellis back in. And Brian Williams at the line. Now Jenkins is in. They're going to play him on Williams and see if his feet can get out there and know where the ball is. McCoy picks up Chapman. Gatlin is on Dabler. 31-27, 5-10 to go first half. Clean block, Derek Lewis. Maryland can cut it to two. That was a great play by Lewis. Nice speed, and Williams gets two more. And Jenkins just got beaten. He didn't follow the ball, and it went right down the lane. He thought he had it trapped on the corner, and the next thing it's up top, and they slide it right down the lane for an easy one. Brian Williams with 12 points now. Chapman for three. Davender 
gets the long rebound after Williams missed it. Nice mid-air adjustment, and Gatlin fouls Davender, so Ed goes back to the free throw line. Eddie Sutton right now is putting Leron Ellis back in for Jenkins because of that real poor defensive play against Williams. And they're going to have a little talk with him, say, you're going to play, you're going to have to get out there and know where the ball is and know where your man is and get your hand up in the lane. And Ellis seemed to do it pretty well, but he's, what's he got, two personals, Ellis? Yes. And a little bit of a gamble going on here now. Lock with three and Ellis with two, right? And Williams with 12 points. Wade's been like a real football player. You know how they pick on cornerbacks when he was uh, playing football? Right. Defensive backs. That's what he's doing in the, to the Kentucky defense. He's picking on a position he feels that Kentucky has a weakness defensively at center. Bob Wade's the answer to a terrific trivia question. Who's the only man in the NCAA tournament this year who played for both of this year's Super Bowl teams? Denver and Washington. <laughs> with that question. Is that what you do up in Steamboat? Of soda pop. <laughs> Only. <laughs> Foul on Ellis. That's three on the run, Ellis. Now Eddie Sutton's got a real dilemma. He sure does. Now, that's why freshmen cause your heartaches. There's a kid that really has been playing pretty aggressively, doing a fairly decent defensive job and comes up with a third personal foul on really a foul that he should not have committed. That sends Gatlin to the line. But next year he will be a sophomore, so he won't make those kind of fouls, I think. Welcome those of you who've been watching the Vanderbilt-Pittsburgh game. We're at Riverfront Coliseum, Southeast Region's second round game. Maryland has been sticking right with Kentucky. They fell behind by as many as nine, put together a run, and right now they trail by just two. 33-31 with 4-12 to go in the first half of play. And defensively, the key story for Kentucky has been a trio of fouls by Rob Rock and Ron Ellis and Brian Williams. The freshman center of Maryland has 12 points. There's... Winston Bennett, the high scorer in the ball game with 12 for Kentucky, who will go to the line again. But the story, uh, strategy-wise, is whose big guys are going to win this game and uh, hang in there towards the end and overpower the other pit guys, big guys. The guards are virtually uh, even up. Even Steven scoring defense, what have you. It's got to be the big guys that win this game. And that's been pretty much a standoff right now. And Maryland's been picking on uh, the center of Kentucky. This will be the 15th first half free throw event for Kentucky. And Bennett misses. Live from Riverfront Coliseum, Southeast Region's second round game, a sellout crowd. We're only an hour and a half away from Lexington, so most of the folks from the Kentucky area. Bennett with 12. Front court scoring Maryland 17, Kentucky 23 thus far. Bennett gets one out of two. And the lead is back to three at 34-31. Kentucky over Maryland. Gatlin. Back to Hood. And Bennett pulls down the rebound. Maryland has fought back from that nine-point deficit, but they've not been able to take the lead. Chapman dishes underneath to Ellis, who's short, and Williams with a rebound. Foul by Laurent. No, out of bounds. I beg your pardon. It was blocked by the official. So it'll be Kentucky's ball. You know, Kentucky's offense has got such good movement in it that when you stop playing everybody, trying to stop the Chapman, trying to stop the Bennett, that you can slip it inside. And Ellis really can, I mean, for a, a freshman, he plays very well on the inside. Chapman misses again. Rex Chapman he is one for six. Williams has 14 points, Donnie. They're going to pick, pick, pick until they really get uh, the two centers of Kentucky in foul trouble. The lead is one. Eric Manuel. And they have 
have to hit those outside shots right now because they're not getting an awful lot of inside point production. That's not the, the big part of Kentucky's game. Maryland has outscored Kentucky 18 to 10 in the last seven and a half minutes. Derek Lewis from way outside. I don't know they want him taking that shot. Well, they claim he can make it, but he sure didn't look like he was a good shooter from out there. That was a line drive push shot. I never saw one of those before. That foul on Tion McCoy of Maryland. And Rex Chapman goes to the free throw line. But first, Bob Wade and the Maryland Terrapins want a timeout. They've taken one. They're still within three. At Pizza Hut, we make it fast. We have time for lunch. We make it hot. It's going to be hot, right? And we make it great. Hey. Making it fast. Making it hot. Giving it everything we've got. Making your style. Give me a smile. Slicing it, spicing, and cheese and pleasing. At Pizza Hut, we go all out to make it fast, hot, and delicious. Making it happen, making your taste. Pizza Hut, making it great. Introducing a high-performance luxury sedan made the Mazda way. High-performance luxury sedans traditionally ask you to pay a pretty dear price. Well, that's not the Mazda way. Mazda's all-new 929 has world-class luxury appointments. It's amazingly quiet, solid riding, and actually outperforms those guys. Now there's less standing between you and a car this good. About $8,000 less. This is the Mazda way. Kentucky up 36-33 with 2.33 to go in the first half of play. Brian Williams has been a big star. Oh, yeah. I'm the great pretender. Right side has a son playing a dominant role in this game. Brian Williams with 14 points. And his father, Gene, an original member of one of the great rock and roll groups in the 50s and early 60s. Tommy and I had a chance to talk to Brian Williams before the game said, is your dad here? Said, nope, he's working tonight in Las Vegas. So all of you in the Las Vegas area, you go see the Platters tonight. I bet you'll see that Gene Williams is awfully proud of his son. They really had quite the first half here, they're focusing their offense on him, picking on the Kentucky center. Lewis has not been involved in the offense that much because that's where they feel the weakness of Kentucky is, at the center spot. Attack that spot. Yeah, it's not been a point of Derek Lewis having an off base so much. No, nope, it's just, just where they feel the weakness is and where they're going to try and direct the ball. Meanwhile, this man, Rex Chapman, is having a horrid day so far. But that rebound from LeRon Ellis goes in. I'll tell you, he's playing a terrific basketball game. If Williams is a great freshman center, so is LeRon Ellis. But he can go out and put the ball on the floor, too. 38-33, 2 10 to go. Rudy Archer has been on the bench for the latter stages of this first half with three fouls. Playing a 1-3-1 one, one zone right now to try and protect the big guy inside. Help him out so they have to find another opening. Winston Bennett doing the defensive job of Derek Lewis and Ellis bats it in his face. Now Davender, he did not see Emmanuel right side and then he traveled. He had a man open to his right. Uh, here's Ellis in the middle of that left of your screen going to come up to the middle of the zone. And the ball goes inside to Lewis. And look at Ellis just move over there and make a great block. He's sitting there waiting on the release of the ball. And Lewis didn't know where he came from. Eddie Sutton doing some... Smart things right now. Changing up the defense, confusing Maryland a little bit. Now in that zone, they switch, and Bennett's got primary responsibility. He fronts Williams. McCoy for three. Now that's why he's been the off guard right now, and Gatlin's going to run the offense because McCoy can hit that shot. Vanderbilt has come back over Pittsburgh in Lincoln, Nebraska. Foul away from the ball. 
Derek Lewis fouled Rex Chapman. That's three on Lewis. Lewis joins Rudy Archer with three for Maryland. Locke and Ellis both have three for Kentucky. And Bob Wade makes a move to his bench. Dave Dickerson, the 6'6 junior, comes in. And Lewis goes to the fight with no points. On the line for Kentucky. Chapman is now one of five from the free throw line and one of six from field goal range. And ever since his injury, he's been shooting great. So this is kind of an aberration this first half for him, but that playing some excellent defense on him. Every time he misses, somebody puts it back in. This time it's Davender. Can we say the battle of the big guys underneath the boards? What's that little guy doing in there, tipping it in? Like Elliot Perry of Memphis State getting ready to hang from the rim for a Michael Jordan commercial. <laughs> There's Davender chasing down the loose ball. Fifty seconds to go before halftime. The lead is four. What a battle man. And no goaltending. Leron Ellis with perfect timing. But it was a little suspect. Boy, did he get up. Well, he just dropped from the middle of that 1-3-1 zone and swatted it away. And the man roaming around on the baseline. I'll tell you, he can leap, and he's got great quickness. Now, that's the secret of a good shot blocker. you got to be a little intelligent. You can't go over and try and block the shot before the ball releases is released from the player's hands. You... We well, welcome those of you who have been watching Vanderbilt at Pitt. That score tied 34-all at halftime. Here in Cincinnati, Ohio, it's a 40-37 Kentucky lead. We're at the Riverfront Coliseum. Maryland has not led in this game. They were tied early at two apiece. They trailed by as many as nine at the 10-minute mark by a count of 24-15. And right now, the lead is at two, 40-38, as the big freshman center, Brian Williams, has led Maryland with 14 points. And the two big men for Kentucky, Locke and Ellis, have three fouls each trying to defend him. But Davender gets two more. Boy, what hang time on that one. He waited till those big guys with the red jerseys went up and came down. That's hang time. Maryland will play for the final shot. Again, they trail by nine points. For the Maryland Terrapins, two men with three fouls each. Rudy Archer, the point guard on the bench. That's for three, and that's good. And the lead is one with three seconds to go. That's the end of the first half with the score, 42-41. CBS coverage continues after this message and a word from your local station. CBS Sports coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by Pontiac Grand Am, a true driver's coupe built with a feel for the road. AT&T, the right choice. And by Budweiser, proud sponsor of the 1988 U.S. Olympic team. This Bud's for you. Today, we're going to find out why America rides Monroe shocks and struts. Sir, why do you ride Monroe? It's the better handling. Oh, that's right. Huh? It's the smoother ride. Better handling. Smoother ride. Better handling. Smoother ride. Less filling. Well, whatever your reason, see your Monroe ride expert for the best ride ever. <laughs> Guaranteed. No wonder America rides Monroe shocks and struts. Every 10 seconds of every hour of every business day, America puts a brand new Epson computer or printer to work. Imagine that. Businesses of every kind and size putting the power of Epson into millions of hands. Every 10 seconds, another new Epson. It's true. When you've got an Epson, you've got a lot of company. At Prudential Beach, rock solid means experience to develop individualized investment ideas. Market wise means finding opportunities in any investment climate. Prudential Beach Securities, rock solid, market wise. You hear the thunder, the call of the road. Whether it's the roar of an available turbo or 16 valve engine, Grand Am is sheer driving excitement. 
And now, with $400 back direct from Pontiac, you can really cash in on Grand Am excitement. Get on your Pontiac! Rebuild excitement! A Brooklyn-born hustler. His pal, a starving actor, and a painting worth millions make for a deal too hot to handle. John LaRoquette, Gregory Harrison, tonight, Hot Paint. This is CBS. We can't afford the time or the money to take chances on car repair. But we found a tire store that has great automotive service. It's Big O's Extra Care. Big O Tire's Extra Care services include professional brake service, alignments, front-end repairs, plus shocks and struts. And Big O's Extra Care service warranties are honored at over 260 Big O stores in 15 states. The warranties are nice, but more important, they did the job right the first time. <laughs> Sam Meyer's formal wear, because some nights are worth it. Welcome back to halftime. Kentucky with a one-point lead over Maryland. Rex Chapman, one for six from the field, one for six from the line, only three points, and the Wildcats with a one-point lead. That is in Cincinnati. Meanwhile, in Lincoln, it's squared off at 34. Vanderbilt and Pittsburgh will Purdue with 11 points. And the Commodores have come back from 13 down to pull even with the Panthers at 34 all. Back here in the studio, Jim Nance along with James Brown. And uh, JB, what a comeback there by Vanderbilt in the first half. I'll tell you, one of the big problems Pittsburgh is having right now, 12 turnovers in the first half, and a lot of questions about that freshman backcourt and whether or not it can handle the pressure of an NCAA tournament. That freshman backcourt is going to have to be a lot more poised in the second half for Pitt. Pitt's doing the job on the boards, though. All right, those two games at Lincoln and at Cincinnati are at halftime. There is a game in progress right now. That's in Hartford, where Georgia Tech is only 5 for 21 from the floor and trailing to the surprising Richmond Spiders. Let's go to the hoop in that game with Brett Musburger and Billy Packer. Well, welcome those of you who've been watching the other games. I'm Brett Musburger with Billy Packer, and here, Richmond, which eliminated Indiana, now doing a job on Georgia Tech. Tech wearing the white uniforms. There is the summary from the field. Richmond on that great run over the last seven minutes, but it's been their defense that has created it. They are holding Georgia Tech of the ACC to 25% from the field. They have completely frustrated Tommy Hammonds here so far. It's 25-17. Sherrod for Bobby Cremens makes it 25-18 and there's a man, Dick Tarrant, who has done a marvelous job with these Richmond Spiders. Billy Packer, an overview from you on what we've seen here. Well, I think the key thing is that Richmond defensively have just taken away Georgia Tech's game completely. Inside, Wolfhawk has been very strong when, uh, when they had needed him in the early going, but since that time, it's strictly a game of defense. Quick point guard for the Spiders. Atkinson gives it up. Winicki now handling the ball over to English. The wide body is Wolfolk. Ball off a of foot, so they'll recycle the clock here. And there is Wolfolk. Uh, Revis was a star for Temple in an earlier game today. And uh, Wolfolk doing some of the same things very efficiently here for the Spiders, especially setting some screens. I'll tell you what's interesting. Sherrod's guarding him now. I think Wolfolk is better when he goes up against a taller man so he can get down, use that body. A smaller man may have a better chance. Here's a little double team by Georgia Tech. Atkinson, a tremendous so quick. quick. Comes completely around the horn with a quickness, short with the shot, and Richmond wants it right now. He won't miss shoot. many of those. So powerful. Let's take a look at the Hartford bracket and Temple. A winner by 21 over Georgetown earlier today. And the Owls now advance down to East Rutherford, New Jersey. And they'll play either Georgia Tech or Richmond. Bobby Crimmins over there on the Georgia Tech sideline. Well, we have a moment, Billy. Let's talk about the other coach. Folks may not know Dick Tarrant all that well. Well, Dick was a fellow who uh, served his time as a high school coach. As a matter of fact, there was even a time he was out of coaching and had a scouting service, and he used to just plead with people to give him a chance. Got a chance to go down as an assistant coach at Richmond under Lou Getz and then move into the head position when Getz stepped aside. Sends a sub on into the game now. Benji Taylor for the first time. Something you may not know about Tarrant. He played high school football and basketball in Inglewood, New Jersey for a fellow by the name of Vince Lombardi. 
Georgia Tech brings it up now on Terrence Spiders, 27-18. Oliver, but there was a whistle on the inside, and it goes against Sherrod. That's three personals on number 42, and they go to the one and one. So Bobby Crimmins has gone a long way with Hammonds on the bench, Scott on the bench. He had uh, Farrell on the bench a little bit. The only guy that hadn't been out of there has been Oliver. Bobby got here beating Iowa State, and of course, those of you who are watching good games involving Pittsburgh right now, Kentucky, Maryland, have to say some nice things about Coach Wade, and then you will see Arizona Seton Hall, plus some other regional action. Winicki short on that free throw. He did touch the rim with it, though. Now Farrell off the dribble. I have never seen a team quite this cold. They're getting shots, they just can't get anything to fall. We've got about a minute 12 left here in the first half with time winding down. Taylor giving Atkinson a breather here at the point for the Spiders. Wolfolk up using the glass. It's been a clinic by the team which eliminated Bob Knight. Can't hold for the last shot. To be a smart thing to do, you don't want to go down any further. Aggressive defense. Oliver off the dribble. Offense. Offensive foul. When you look at the 16 teams going to the East region, who would have predicted that Rhode Island and also perhaps Richmond would join Duke and Temple at the regional final? It appeared to be by far the strongest of the regions. Already Rhode Island is there. They will play Duke and now Richmond with an impressive lead over Georgia Tech. Certainly a lot of time left in the game as Atkinson returns, but it's this defense that impresses you with the Spiders right now. They're going to hold for one last shot. Now, this is a good time to go out and trap somebody. Steve Kratzer, you got a shot of him. He's checked back in. He was the starting center for Richmond. He was given a long rest by Coach Tarrant. So the 1-4. There's Wolfolk. Great block. block. by Farrell. Surprised they went to the basket that soon. The 3. Two seconds, and the half will end. Well, that's the fewest points in a half by a Georgia Tech team this year. 20. All right, so Dick Terrence's front line did the job on Friday against Dean Garrett in Indiana. They're doing the job against the front line of Georgia Tech. They lead it 29 to 18. Earlier today in Hartford, Connecticut, it was Temple giving Georgetown its worst NCAA tournament defeat ever. The score there, 74 to 53. Now, the Temple fans were hoping for a big one there, and indeed, they got it. And what they saw early on, though, were the Hoyas' defense keeping them in the game early as Charles Smith goes a distance after the steal, just like John Thompson diagrammed it. However, Tim Perry not only good on defense, strong on the offensive end as he slams it in strong, Temple takes it by the score of 74 to 53. And we'll send you back to your games after this. The NCAA Final Four moves to Seattle next year, and it's not too early to think about tickets. To obtain an official 1989 Final Four ticket application, call 913-677-1989 before 10 p.m. Central Time tonight, or weekdays during business hours, or write to 1989 Final Four tickets, P.O. Box 1906, Mission, Kansas 66201. Applications must be received by April 15, 1988. This message furnished by the NCAA. The words higher education bring to mind images of books and classrooms of scientists and laboratories. But a college or university education consists of much more than just classrooms and tests. During my university years, I met people from many different cultures and countries. I heard new ideas and opinions. I acquired experience, experience in and out of the classroom experience in setting and achieving goals, in cooperating with other people, in making decisions, 
Well, that experience has served me well throughout my entire life and career. A college or a university education can enhance all facets of life. It can be a priceless treasure. This message furnished by the NCAA. Halftime in Cincinnati of CBS Sports coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship will continue after this message and a word from your local station. While some still believe you can't take it with you, those who've driven the new Mitsubishi wagon know just the opposite to be true. Now not only can you take it with you, but you can do so with a remarkable combination of style, spacious comfort, and versatility. The new Mitsubishi wagon, patiently crafted so you can take it all with you. Or better yet, so you can leave it all behind. Mitsubishi. Suddenly, the obvious choice. That's our dad. He's having problems again. We've got problems again. No baseball, no picnic, no trip to the zoo. If you've got better things to do with your time, buy a Toro. And for a limited time, you'll get up to $300 off. So if you know anybody who'd like to take us to a ball game? Or maybe the zoo. If she like to go. Haven't you done without a Toro long enough? How to shave a giant. Avoid big trouble. Use the Gillette Good News Plus Disposable. It's got the Lubra Smooth Strip. So the comfortable shave for a giant is... This little guy. Good News Plus. From Gillette. Okay. Alex will now do his famous dog impersonations. Grab a straw light and relax. Ready, Alex? All right, who's this? Oh, <laughs> Rin Tin Tin. Look at this. Look at this. Tramp, my three sons. Right. Yeah. This is my favorite. Benji. Oh, I don't know how he does it. It's amazing. <laughs> Strolite, fire brewed for smooth, consistent taste. No, here, here he comes. Here comes. Who's that supposed to be? Beats me. This is CBS. It's the postseason, and that means that spring is just around the corner. I have my game plan, and it's time you make your game plan for spring with H&S Hardware. Right now at H&S Hardware, you can buy Ace Tone Latex Flat Wall Paint featuring eight-year durability, one-coat coverage, and no-charge custom colors for just $9.99 a gallon. H&S Hardware, the only game plan for your spring projects, your complete savings, and lawn headquarters. <laughs> CBS Sports coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by UPS. For overnight delivery from coast to coast, UPS runs the tightest ship in the shipping business. Pizza Hut, home of America's favorite pan pizza. Pizza Hut, making it great. And by the heartbeat of America, today's Chevrolet. Halftime score, Kentucky 42, the University of Maryland 41. They trail by as many as nine midway through the first half. Tom Heinsohn thought the centers might be the story today. They have been in the first half. Brian Williams, the freshman out of Santa Monica, 14 points and four rebounds on five of seven. Rob Lock for Kentucky with two points, no rebounds, and three fouls. And Ron Ellis has also picked up three fouls. Yeah, but he kicked in another four points, so that's the total center position. That's where Maryland's trying to make hay. Uh, Kentucky's kind of spread out their offense in other places, uh, but I still think it's going to be an inside game. Who controls the inside portion wins this ball game. Rob Locke will start the second half playing with three fouls. Chapman is also in the lineup along with Davender, Manuel, and Winston Bennett. So the starting five are in for the Kentucky Wildcats. That ball out of bounds, it'll be Kentucky. The Gatlin is playing. Derek Lewis, no points in the first half. Archer's back in with three fouls. Lewis also with three. I'm sure they're going to try and get Lewis back in it. There's two more for Williams. Oh, they just said two beautiful picks. 
that little inside the paint rotation to bring Williams to the ball with a late defender making a rush at him, and he went right by him. Williams with 16 points. Manuel feeds it off the lock for an easy two. Well, there's one thing that Maryland doesn't do well, and that's play a defense. They kind of let people get into the gut of their defense too easily. Williams again. Two more. Now, there is a kid that knows how to play the low post. Gets great position and gives the passer a good target. Maryland on top again by three. Chapman gets a two-pointer, but that's only his second basket of the game from the field. Chapman is now two of seven. Well, he's not been forcing his shot, and he's not been a focus of the offense. I think uh, Winston Bennett has been that in the early part of this ball game. Underneath. Lewis breaks the drought. That's his first basket of the game. And another good pick on Manuel by Williams to shake, or was it Massenburg to uh, shake Lewis loose? 47-46, Maryland on top as the lead has seesawed here in the opening moments of the second half. Three-pointer, Manuel blocked with the rebound. The putback is good. Good rebound by Locke. He was in the right spot as Williams just misjudged the leap. Archer, spin move, knocked out of his hands by Ed Davender. And then the misfire as Gatlin tosses it away. Out of bounds, it'll be Kentucky to retain. Oh, you see what guards can do defensively by good hands. Here is Williams going for the rebound. Just mistimes a little bit, and Locke just took it off over the top. And freshmen sometimes like to make little mistakes. Little tiny ones. Locke, spin move short with the shot, but he will shoot. Brian Williams gets the foul, but that's his first. Brian Williams, I think right now, is the focus of Eddie Sutton's attack. Let's get it in there and make him play a little defense, too. And he has been susceptible to foul problems. That is his first. That's his first. Team first in this half. And Chapman the inbound. Knocked away by Archer. Kentucky again. Eddie Sutton out of Buckland, Kansas. When his players would come into the pro ranks, you knew that they were motivated and good defensive players. Rejected. Yes, sir. With a capital R and a capital J. That they can do. Live from Riverfront Coliseum, as CBS continues the NCAA championship. Williams with 18 points and four rebounds. Chapman has only five points so far. Two field goals and one free throw. 48-47, Kentucky up. There's Chapman for three. Now he's in the groove. Uh, trying to make sure that he's in the ball game. He's their inspirational spark. And they want to get the fans at Rupp Arena North into this ball game a little bit more. Heard Tommy refer to this as Rupp Arena North. That's what Eddie Sutton calls Riverfront Coliseum. Gatlin for three. <laughs> Bennett fights for the rebound and grabs it. I'll tell you, he's having a game. Offensively, and he's doing a job defensively and on the boards. Solid player. Seven rebounds for Winston Bennett now. 51-47, 16-26 to go in the ballgame. Winner here goes to Birmingham. Bennett turn around. In and out. Locked with a rebound. And that was a little more experience working on the freshman. Locke just moved them out. Bob Wade wants time in Rupp Arena North. Chevy S10 invites you to own the street with the biggest engine ever offered in a compact pickup. The most V6 power and torque available in a compact truck. And a price to make your heart beat faster than ever. The heartbeat of America. That's the day.
gray Chevy truck. American business can save millions of dollars every year with the UPS Next Day Air Letter. Unlike other companies which frequently charge up to $14, UPS, because we're so efficient, charges only $8.50. And we guarantee overnight delivery to every address, coast to coast. The UPS Next Day Air Letter, the super saver of overnight letters. At Pizza Hut, we make it fast. We have time for lunch. We make it hot. It's going to be hot, right? And we make it great. Great. Making it fast. Making it hot. Giving it everything we've got. Making your smile. Give me a smile. Slicing the spice and cheese and pleasing. At Pizza Hut, we go all out to make it fast, hot, and delicious. Making it happen. Making your taste. Pizza Hut. Making it great. Every once in a while, reality exceeds your dreams. A tradition unlike any other. The Masters, CBS Sports. As the score, as good as the freshman Williams is playing, right in the middle of the paint, he gets mesmerized. He doesn't know where his man is, and Rob Locke just slips in underneath him. That's experience at work, and puts the ball back in. I bet in two years from now, he'll know where that man is, and Rob Block or anybody else won't get the rebound. Wildcats on a 7-0 run, and they've assumed a six-point lead. 16 minutes to go in the second half. Gatlin Chapman. Gatlin gets it back. Archer looks underneath quickly for Williams. Now Lock playing with three fouls. Brian Williams over him. And Williams has 20 points in the ballgame. Well, he's as good a looking low post player as I've seen in a long time, and he's only a freshman. You know, they don't, you don't have good low post players anymore. I don't know how to play with get back to the basket. Lock, no basket. No basket. Why aren't there any good low post players? Well, they got into all these gimmick defenses, you know, the zone presses and what have you, and that's become a big part of offensive basketball. And there's a lot of guards that coach in colleges that don't know how to teach big guys. <laughs> <laughs> he takes a defensive back. <laughs> I knew you'd have an answer. Lock, good job of blocking out Williams. And Lock gets the free throw. 53-49, 15-10 to go. The winner goes on to Birmingham. Davido. He's in double figures again. I love it. My watcher's just staying with Chapman at the... Making it difficult to even get him the ball. Lock again. Oh, they are. They're going right at Williams. Hey, he's playing like a, a senior offensively. Let's see if he can play like a senior defensively. And Lock is getting his licks. Rob Locke is now 5 of 7 from the field, including a perfect 4 of 4 in this half. And the lead again is 6. Here's Williams. That'll bring up the predictable cry and air ball. Chapman. Easy, easy shot that time, too. And that's Chapman. That's three in a row for Chapman. So he's back in the groove after a one for six, one for seven first half. And really diversifying their offense right now. Inside, outside. They've matched the largest lead of the game. Massengale almost loses it. Having trailed by one, they now lead 58-49. 14 minutes to go. Bennett comes over on the double team and draws the foul. They're starting to run a second man at him right now, trying to help lock out in this man-to-man -man defense. And just to get him to hesitate an instant so that he will take his eye off the basket. That foul was on Bennett, though Rob Locke is coming out, and they're going to bring... Leron Ellis, who had a quality first half back in. Well, Locke gave him quality second half so far. Let's see if Ellis can keep it up. Archer. Dion McCoy comes back into the lineup now. He had a good first half with eight points, number 11. Here's Gatlin. Up back to the man to the man. Rebound Winston Bennett. That's his eighth. 
Lewis that time is going to become the focal point of the offense, and Ellis is going to guard him, and I think Lewis is going to have a tough time getting a shot over him. Archer guarded by Chapman, brings it back out. 13-25 remaining in the game. Bob Wade has gone to the small lineup now. Archer, Gatlin. Trying to get Lewis the ball. See if he can work Ellis over. There's Lewis. He's got four in the game now. Oh boy, he just uh, felt his way right yeah. around Ellis. Ellis went up straight not to draw that extra foul. Made no play on the ball. Opening moments in the second half. Richmond leading and Pittsburgh back on top of Vanderbilt after they were tied at halftime. Our score, 58-51. Kentucky up by seven. Largest lead in the game was nine. Once in the first half, once again moments ago. And Rex Chapman. Oh, oh. That looked like out of 1949. Yo. I think his dad, Wayne, taught him that. <laughs> Cliff Hagen, I think, might have had a little bit to do. That's an old one. As old as you and me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 60 to 51, and Chapman has come alive in this half. He's got 13 points now, had three at the half. Ellis, little jump hook. Bennett can't hang on, it'll be Maryland's ball. You know, once a guy blocks your shot, and you know he's still defending you, it, it's awfully difficult not to look at him instead of the, bas uh, the basket. You're supposed to look at the basket at all times, never worry about the defender. That time, Lewis looked at Ellis and lost the basket. Nearing 12 minutes to go in this second round Southeast region game. McCoy passes on the shot. Gatlin takes it for three. Right in the heart. They need some of those from that man. He has had many easy three-point opportunities today. The ball has been sitting on the ring, rim. Two bounces, but bouncing off. Eric Manuel. Move. I'll tell you, this kid is some kind of player, too. Manuel, another freshman out of Macon, Georgia. Eddie Sutton likes what he's done recruiting for next year as well. He signed three blue chip players already. How about the move from Lewis? And Massenberg just put a monster pick on Lewis's man, Ellis. 62-56, 11-10 to go in the ball game. Pass from Davenant. Miscommunication with LaRon Ellis, and they had to chase it down. Here you're going to see them come out. Look at Massenburg just come up there, and then bang, just make sure that Ellis ran into his own man. That's what freed Lewis up. That's those little cute things. Kentucky cannot shake Maryland. They get it tonight, and the Maryland Terrapins come right back. And now they have a chance to cut it to four. Two-three zone right now, Kentucky playing. Archer misfires on the three-point shot. And Davender walks it up. Yeah, they recognize the defense, but it took them out of their rhythm. McCoy is going to Chapman now defensively. And Chapman is four of seven in this half. Asenberg comes up with it. And here come the Terrapins. Alley oop! Was Derek Lewis. What a tough-minded team this Maryland is. They hang in there. And Kentucky trying to put them away with a sword in the heart. It's not happening. Lead is four. LaRon Ellis. Out shot. Rebound. Gatlin. Here come the Terrapins. Archer. Feed to Massenburg. Misses the shot. Oh, what a big miss. Well, that's enough to tear your heart out, but... You're a Maryland fan. That was an easy one. But this team keeps battling back. I admire that. Pick yourself up the dirt in your face. Go get it. That's what a football coach tells you when he coaches basketball. Go, 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 go. Bob Wade is Tommy Hines' reference. That's for two. Eddie Davender. And there's Eddie Sutton. Davender. Lead is back to six. The lead twice in this game has been nine. Once at the 10-minute mark of the first half, 
And then at the 16-minute mark of this half. But each time, Maryland has come back. And here they come again. And a little kick on the man-to-man -man defense that time. Working to allow Massenburg just to slide through. 64, 68, 54 to go in the game. Rob Watt getting ready to come back in. So is Richard Madison. Davender, no charge. Blocking foul. Fourth foul on Derek Lewis. Now, one of the good things about Eddie Sutton's offense is that it's a lot of motion and you get the four other defenders very, very busy fighting picks and looking where the ball is and all of a sudden you can shoot a guard right up the gap. That time Lewis tried to take away the attack angle from Davender but White didn't get down quick enough to establish the charge call. Locke is back in for Kentucky. Lewis is out for Maryland with four fouls now. Brian Williams back in along with Massimo. McCoy, Archer, and Gatlin. There's Rob Locke. As soon as Williams went out of the game, Eddie Sutton lifted Locke so that he could save him to play Williams down the stretch. And now they're both back in and Davin at the line. Fourteen points, including six of seven from the free throw line. And I hate to say anything when a guy shooting a free throw. It's like somebody putting for a hundred thousand dollars. I know you. You were looking in his eyes. <laughs> music system. Now, the best seat in the house is in your GM car. Delco Electronics. It's who we are. It's like the right girl with the right man or the right way with the right man. Take a new step, make your next round. The silver bullet, it won't slow you down. So come on in the cool light. It's the right beer now. To the good It's the right thing now. Listen to the heartbeat. Listen to the heartbeat of America. Oh, yeah. Moving into more car doesn't have to be expensive or boring. Today's Chevrolet Celebrity. It's for people who've grown up without growing old. The heartbeat of America. In Lincoln this, uh, this afternoon, the Midwest region, Pittsburgh and Vanderbilt currently underway, and later some of you will see Kansas against the upstart Murray State Racers who knocked off NC State. That's coming up from Lincoln. And farther to the west, of course, Arizona Seton Hall getting ready to tip it off. Many of you will see that game later here this afternoon. We've got Villanova against Illinois. So the action continues here on CBS as we bring you the NCAA Basketball Championship. The finals, of course, coming up in two weeks from Kemper Arena in Kansas City. And lots of surprises have already happened. One of the rice, uh, nice things about our new relationship with uh, the NCAA is that we will bring you the regionals, the semifinals in prime time on Thursday and Friday this year. From Birmingham, East Rutherford, Pontiac, or Seattle. 8.45 to go in this one, 66-60, Kentucky leads. Well, a must right now for Maryland to do something offensively. Normally when you come out of the huddle, you go to your go-to guy, but Lewis is on the bench. Williams, of course, has 20 in the game, and Locke guarding him with three fouls. Fighting for position inside, 
Williams asking for the ball, but Locke doing a good job of ball denial. Yep. Out in the passing lane, all over the passer, making it difficult even to see that target. Wow. Archer, Locke got over the top. Boy, that was a terrific play by Rob Locke. It sure was. He cut off two Maryland rebounders and got a hand on it and tipped it to an open spot. Eight minutes to go. They pop Chapman out on the baseline, and he hits it. As cool as he was in the first half, he's been torrid and stands the number two. Well, the man that's guarding him right now is only 6'1", and the way Chapman leaps, he, didn't feel, he doesn't feel right now anybody's even guarding him. Archer, three-pointer. Three-point field goal. Welcome all of you back to Riverfront Coliseum, Southeast Region's second round game. From Cincinnati, 68-63, Kentucky over Maryland at 7.25 to go in the ball game. Chapman has continued with a hot hand for Kentucky in this half. He's up to 15 points now. Eric Manuel has the ball. Looking underneath the lock. And Williams, who was running him, got the ball. Yep, and there was also some decent help from Massenburg, I think it was. The lead is five. The largest lead in the game has been nine, twice by Kentucky. Gatlin for three. Yes! And the lead is now two. He has not been hot most of this game with those three-pointers. But he has been an outstanding three-point shooter, and they certainly can use it now as the big man is starting to tire down. They carried both ball clubs for quite a while. Gatlin misses that shot and a chance for the Terrapins to tie. Their largest lead has been one three times early second half. I say that because they could go on top with this uh, shot of a three-pointer. Foul. Madison. Winston Bennett getting ready to come back in now for Kentucky. Derek Lewis with four fouls getting ready to reappear for the Maryland Terrapins. So Madison was in quickly. He's out. Massenburg is out for Maryland. And Winston Bennett's going to stay with Lewis. And that's a height advantage that goes to Lewis, I believe. 68 66, 620 to go. Archie thought about the three pointer and takes it. Bennett with a rebound. That's 10 rebounds for Winston Bennett. He's just been sensational. Helped him get off to good start. Chapman pops into the three. And was fouled. Perhaps the rarest play in basketball. A chance for a four-pointer. Well, you know, one of the great things about Chapman, he's not small. And he's got great leaping ability. So anytime, watch him come off this double pick. The little guy, McCoy, trying to get out there. And nowhere near is McCoy's hand going to bother Chapman. He's so small in comparison, and he ends up banging him. So when they need two from the outside, they will shake Chapman loose with all kinds of those double picks. And a four-point play puts Kentucky back on top by six with 5.55 to go. Chapman now six of nine in this half after one of seven in the first half. 5.45 remaining. Gatlin. He's a cool customer, too. Wow. He just took it in there, showed him the ball, and lifted him under control all the way. Gatlin with 13 now. Hips that one out of bounds. It'll be Kentucky's ball. Eddie Sutton saying, what have I got to do to make these guys go away? We're shooting great. We're rebounding great. And they're still here, nipping at our heels. Thus far in the game, Williams has 20 points and four rebounds. Chapman with 13 in the second half has 16 points. Boy, they're just like a, a bunch of pesky nets. Oh, you God, can't I, shake them. I tell you, this is a tenacious group down in Maryland. Spin move, Chapman. Oh, oh. oh. how smooth has he become in this half? Boy, he has taken over their offense now. 
The lead at 6, 74, 68. We're under five minutes. And Locke has done a successful job of keeping the ball away from Williams. There's Chapman backing down, so there's no angle to pass Williams the ball. Boy, you brought up a, a good point. Bob Locke with three fouls in the first half. There's a foul on Davender, but he has really done an effective job on Williams in this half. I'm kind of playing double team against him, but here is Chapman gets angled off, says, I'm getting back on an attack angle to the basket, and with that great leaping ability, goes over the top of probably any guard in college basketball. Derek Lewis, there's Rex Chapman, and Lewis at the line. Boy, he just pushes that ball from the numbers on this free throw. I mean, I Let's watch this free throw. Randy Matson or Perry O'Brien. We haven't got a little arc on that thing. I don't know. Oh, hits the front. He counts on it, hitting the front of the rim. And then rolling in. <laughs> well, whatever. The technique work time has been called. 4.43 to go. In Alamance County, North Carolina, Honda lawnmowers are assembled from the wheels up. Beginning with the Honda overhead valve engine, each precision part is fitted and assembled to exacting tolerances. Then, the final critical step that determines whether a machine will meet the Honda standard. The Clara Johnson test. If Clara pulls and it starts, it's a Honda. Ship it! The Honda lawnmower. It's easy to start, or else. How to shave an angel. For heaven's sake, use the Gillette Good News Plus Disposable. It's got the Lubra Smooth Strip, so the comfortable shave for an angel is... This little devil. Good News Plus, from Gillette. What a hell. Yeah, get the brakes done? Uh-huh. You might have sized them? I didn't think it mattered. Didn't matter? Halfway up the Himalayas and it didn't matter? Might have sized your brakes and get it right the first time. Once more. An employee pension fund, 1,000 phone calls a day through voice processing on the Wang VS computer. The VS Access is an IBM 4381 voice access, Wang Office, WP Plus, COBOL for 71 pension administrators online. So the mainframe's operating as a file server? Yeah, we do all the integration. That's our edge. Voice, data, word, networking, human factors. Uh, human factors? Real people. When they pick up the phone, they're integrated. Integration's key. Uh, good point. So I'll open with Wait the... Wait one uh, second. I thought I was opening. Later this afternoon, Arizona against the Seton Hall Pirates, P.J. Carlesimo's team against Lute Olsen's bunch. Also later from Los Angeles, Iowa against UNLV in the West region. But most of you will see that Arizona Seton Hall game. Here, Kentucky hangs on. They lead by four with 4.43 to go. And elsewhere around the country currently, as the NCAA tournament continues, Richmond leading Georgia Tech 40-34. The Spiders continue to climb and spin a web. Vanderbilt with a two-point lead over Pittsburgh out in Lincoln. Interesting game, Richmond. You know, Richie Tarrant, the coach, was uh, a draft choice of the Boston Celtics, and he was quite a player in his own right. Become the sage of the East Coast with that victory over Indiana the other day. 4.39 to go here. Our second game coming up a half hour after this one. Over. Villanova against Illinois. And I bumped into Roly Massimino at halftime. He's ready. He, I get, he's, Roly's always ready. <laughs> Manuel knocked down as they fight through the pick. Now Davender spins out. Almost loses it from behind as McCoy gives him a tough test. And then Williams knocks it down. Now fresh 45 after the block by Williams. They didn't know what else to do with it. They were surrounded. So might as well shoot it. Eric Manuel peers inside. Davender pops out. Locke wants the ball. Davender takes the shot. Uh -huh. Basket well, by Ed the two Davenport. guards of Kentucky coming into their own. They let the big guys try and do it in the first half, but now they're asserting themselves. Davender with 17 points now. Chapman with 21, 18 have come in this half. And Chapman gets the steal. Travel. Broke a transverse process in his back just before Kentucky played Syracuse at home. Missed just the one game. And has been, as Tommy said, on fire since then, but he was cool in the first half. They weren't going to in the first half. He was not the focus of their offense. Bennett was. McCoy, three-pointer. Three. They refused to quit. I'm telling you. Chapman throws it away. Chapman looking for a 
call from the official saying, hey, I got mugged in an alley here. But those Maryland little guards, they're going to get their hands down low and go after that ball. They had a piece of it a couple of times. 3-10 to go. Gatlin for three. We're tied. The guards are heating up. Gatlin. Maryland is 8 of 17 from three-point range. Timeout, Kentucky. With the score, Kentucky 76, Maryland 76, Kentucky 5. Up everybody it snows snow and more snow the when you're feeling a little under the weather reach for america's favorite cold remedy chevy's s10 blazer 4x4 with its patented instatrack system and newly available 4.3 liter vortec v6 the biggest engine in its class chevy s10 blazer america's favorite sport utility vehicle america's favorite cold remedy the heartbeat of america that's the day chevy truck Ever since your post office invented express mail overnight delivery, others have tried to copy our eagle. But it's not so easy. Because express mail has overnight reliability that's close to perfect, the most convenient locations, and prices as low as 1075. Most others charge you about twice that. So if you want a combination of low prices, convenience, and reliability no one can imitate, use the original express mail service from your post office. It's a beautiful morning. Having a beautiful morning doesn't require a beautiful morning. Because with McDonald's breakfast sandwiches, people can hold a little bit of sunshine right in their hands. In fact, a taste for McDonald's sizzling bacon, fresh cracked eggs, homemade biscuits, and hot McMuffins draws more people out of their homes than any other. It's a beautiful morning. Of course, you don't need bad weather to have a beautiful morning. McDonald's, America's morning place. 52 remaining. Going to be an outside shot taken right here. And look at a little roll in on the shot. And the next thing you know, they have inside position, even though the ball went through. And watch this now. It's not physical in college basketball. You watch Rob Locke and Rob Williams just laying on each other. I think that looks like pro basketball a little bit. Or a new dance. <laughs> there on your back, baby. <laughs> They start something. Interesting how the nature of the game has changed now. The emphasis has gone back to the guards, Tommy. And it's really kind of what you'd expect in a game like this. Go to your experienced players. Right now, let's go to Jim Nance in New York. <laughs> back to Winston Bennett. And a two-point edge, Kentucky over Maryland. 2.32 remaining. Go to the guys who have been around a while, your seniors, your experienced players. Taken away by Winston Bennett. Boy, has he played some kind of defense. Very, very solid defense against Lewis all afternoon long. Gatlin goes for the steal on Davender. Spin move, Eric Manuel, foul on Dave Dickerson. I don't know why Dickerson was out there making a foolish play like that. Now let's look at inside. The pass goes. And just look at the good move by Bennett to strip Lewis. And he was open for an instant. But Bennett was there. John shooting foul. So Kentucky will bring it in. 2-11 remaining. Chapman goes down to work the baseline, and Davino looks in that general direction. They'll pop him out on the left side. There's Chapman turning around. Good. Boy, he's got two ways to go when he's down there. Off one pick, or then he will use a double pick. And Davino had him sighted all the way. For three. Short. Rebound, Kentucky. 1.45 to go. Davino foul by McCoy. did not take a good shot coming up the court. Much too quick. Should have held the ball and worked it down inside. Either you might pick up a three that way 
Let's foul one of the uh, Kentucky players out like a lock. Get him in with another foul. That was only the fifth team foul now, so Kentucky inbounds. But they were just fouling. They weren't really being aggressive to make steals. They were just fouling for fouling's sake. Most of those fouls had no chance to come up with the ball. Rock foul by Williams. Rob Rock is a good free throw shooter. And he'll not go to the line yet. Where is it? Nope. Not yet. One more. Of course, they're making the foul so that they can get to the point where uh, they'll have to shoot them. Let's do it quickly so that the clock, you don't lose so much time on the clock, but they're really not making good gamble fouls. The lead is four. Shot clock at 35. Game clock at 113. Foul on Gatlin. That's his third. Kentucky just spreading it out. And of course, every time you foul, it's a new 45-second clock. He fouls towards number three, Keith Gatlin. And now we'll go to the uh, free throw line. Maryland is over. Spent all that time trying to get to this situation. They wasted about 40 seconds on the clock. And uh, with no possibility of getting any points. Now they only have a minute 13, and they put a guy on the line that's a pretty good free throw shooter. Manuel gets the first of the one and one. The lead is at five with 113 to go. Glass and good. Passed it by Keith Gatlin. Timeout, Maryland. 63 seconds remaining. The lead is at four. The only way to travel is Cadillac style. For 1988, Cadillac introduces a new, larger, more powerful V8, exclusive to DeVille, Fleetwood, Seville, and El Dorado. Let's go, let's live, let's love and live miles. The only way to travel is Cadillac style. How's it going? People that sold me our phone system four months ago just made it obsolete with a new one. No kidding. Does Walsh know about this? He wants to see me after lunch. Good luck. welcomes you, the people who know that winning at life is working hard at it and living it fully day after day. Here's to the winners all of us can be. Holiday Inn salutes you. Here's to the winners. We're on your way. 103 remaining. Let's go back and look at that Gatlin block. Jumper. Well, Gatlin gets on the inside. They take away the three-point. But there's Locke trying to out-finesse Williams. And you shouldn't do that at the end of a ball game. He should have been standing on his feet. He was trying to outfox the referee. And Gatlin got inside for the two. So even seniors make mistakes. <laughs> Eddie Sutton looks on. Gatlin hit the jumper. Our score is 82-78. 63 seconds to go. Kentucky Wildcats will inbound. Largest lead of the game has been nine. Total deny. Had a tough time inbounding it. They get it in the corner to Davender, who's immediately trapped. And Locke comes back to pick it up. Now they've got Manuel open. Feeds it back. That might do it. 
That was just a great play getting out of a pressure defense. That was excellent pressure defense by Maryland. Archer short, rebound Bennett. He's got 11 rebounds today. Foul on Archer. That is his fourth personal foul. Maryland is over the limit. Ed Davender at the line. Davender at the line, shooting one, one and one. He's seven of eight today. Plus the bonus. I have to say that this Kentucky team really knew what they had to do today. The inside guys played great. Vander gets it, and welcome all of you back to our game at Cincinnati. Vanderbilt trailing Pittsburgh 67-63. Here, Kentucky has broken a 76-all tie. They lead 85-78 with 37 seconds left, and Ed Davender shooting the second of a one-and-one. Back-to-back three-pointers by Maryland tied it up 76-all. But then Kentucky broke out to a four-point edge. Their lead now is eight with 37 seconds to go. Maryland with one timeout left, Kentucky with two. Kentucky still has three fouls to give. They've got the possession arrow, and they've got the score. Now, let's go back to Vanderbilt Pitt. Thirty-seven seconds remaining in this ball game. 86-78. Kentucky on top. And it would appear that the second-seeded Wildcats are bound for Birmingham. Uh, I've got to just say one thing. That Eddie Sutton did such a masterful job of rotating his interior people. Rob Locke got in foul trouble. They, uh, he was the focus of the entire defense. And Maryland was taking it right to him. Ellis, Ellis came in, he did an outstanding job of covering for Locke, and this guy that we're looking at, Williams, was the beneficiary of a lot of attention getting the ball to him, but Winston Bennett just took Lewis, uh, Derek Lewis, right out of the game today, played super defense on him and on the boards. 37 seconds to go, and Maryland will inbound it. Steve Hood will take the ball inbounds. There's McCoy. They put up the three-pointer. No, sir. Bennett with his 12th rebound of the ball game. Foul by Gatlin. And barring a total miracle, the Maryland season will end with an 18-13 record. And the Wildcats of Kentucky will remain alive in a quest for their sixth NCAA title. Got to really uh, give Bob Wade a uh, tip of the owl hat here because this basketball team is as fiery, feisty, and uh, it's like a snapping turtle. I mean, they're not going to let go of you, and you better watch out. He's some kind of basketball coach. Eddie Sutton starts to smile. <laughs> That's a long afternoon, isn't it, Tom? Oh, Eddie is a great guy, fun guy. And uh, well, it's basketball time. He's sitting on that sideline bar. It's all business. 25 seconds to go. That one's good. 
We welcome those of you who have been watching Vanderbilt and Pittsburgh. They are now going to overtime, tied at 69. Here at Riverfront Coliseum in the Southeast Region second round game, Kentucky leads by seven. Just to bring you up to date, we have 18 seconds to go. Both teams with one timeout left. Maryland is out of fouls to give. Kentucky can still give three, and the possession arrow favors Kentucky. And Ed Davender will go to the free throw line, shooting one and one. He is 11 of 12 today. With the score 76-70, Maryland hit back-to-back three-pointers by McCoy and Gatlin, the two guards, to tie it at 76 all. But then Bennett got a layup, Chapman hit a jumper, Manuel hit two free throws, and Davender has now hit five. And as a result, despite the frown that's currently on Eddie Sutton's face, his team leads and looks like they're going to Birmingham. 13 to 14 for Davender today. The lead is nine, Tommy Hanson. Well, the guards gave him a great game, and Winston Bennett gave him a great game, and Locke and Ellis, everybody made a solid contribution for the Wildcats. Davender in the corner. Ah. Tried to get a little too cute. That's okay. You can say that's okay. A nine-point lead and five to go. And the Rupp Arena North crowd is going to Birmingham. The Wildcats of Kentucky, 27 and five, over a valiant, tenacious Maryland Terrapin team. Now, let's go back to Jim Nance in New York as the Kentucky Wildcats celebrate. They'll be going to Birmingham and playing there next Friday night. Here's Jim. All right, so a big second half there by Rex Chapman. About two minutes to go. Richmond is up eight on Georgia Tech. An upset there. We'll get you back to Lincoln and the overtime, Vanderbilt and Pittsburgh, when we continue on the road to the Final Four right after this. Every ten seconds of every hour of every business day, America puts a brand new Epson computer or printer to work. Imagine that. Businesses of every kind and size putting the power of Epson into millions of hands. Every ten seconds, another new Epson. It's true. When you've got an Epson, you've got a lot of company. Where is Charlie? So how's your new lawnmower? Great, I've wanted John Deere all my life. Got there first thing this morning. Done in no time. Where is he? I've had my John Deere rider for years. Never had a bit of trouble. Mine started this morning like the first day I got it, and it's seven years old. So what's keeping Charlie? He doesn't have a John Deere, does he? Nothing runs like a deer. State Farm is there when women need life insurance. Whether she brings home a paycheck or works full-time at home, nobody does more for a family than a mother does. That's why so many women talk to State Farm agents about life insurance. We listen, and we help make sure that everything a woman wants to do for her kids gets done. I know how she feels. I have a family, too. Just like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. moved out quickly to a 75-69 lead against Pittsburgh. Jason Matthews misses and Charles Smith comes in. Here's what's happened in overtime. Will Purdue fouled out in regulation and so Frank Cornette, 6'8", junior from Lexington, has moved into the pivot. Those of you watching the Kentucky-Maryland victory and Kentucky over Maryland advancing, Richmond leading Georgia Tech, we welcome you to an exciting battle in the Midwest region, the second round between Vanderbilt of the SEC and Pitt, the regular season Big East champion. We had a tie score at halftime, and Barry Goheen had a three-point shot at the buzzer to send it in overtime. He just missed the shot there, and Pitt coming back trailing by four with 2.35 remaining. And now with Purdue out of the ballgame, Vanderbilt's got to rely on their two guards to supply that offense for them. And the big question, will they be able to do the job on the defensive boards? They're packing it in in their zone defense. Booker hit a three-point here in the overtime. And a technical foul was called against Charles Smith for interfering with the ball above a rim. Goheen made good on that. 
75 to 71. We were tied at 69 going into the five-minute extra session. Demetrius Gore goes for three and hits and pick back in the ball game. It's 75 to 74. They were trailing 75-69, and they've come back quickly. They had excellent patience that time. Pittsburgh made several passes before they got the good shot, and Gore knocked it in. It's a crazy game. We saw Smith and Gore pick up four fouls early, and all of a sudden, Will Perdue picks up those two quick fouls, and now it's an entirely different ball game. And there's Smith out there, four fouls in all. He has hung in. Knocked away by Lane, it's still Vanderbilt ball. This is Dick Stockton and Bill Cunningham, leading scorers in the game. Barry Goheen with 18, leads CM Newton's Vanderbilt Commodores. And the leading scorer for Pitt is Charles Smith with 21. Goheen in the lane, the basket counts and a foul. And now, Dick Paparo indicates that it is an offense foul, it was a the basket does not count. And the foul was before the basket. Matthews fighting through the screen. He got hit right there by before he planted those two feet to go up for the shot. Good call by the official. Foul was on Matthews, and here is Barry Goheen, a junior from Talbert City, Kentucky. Hits the first free throw. His three-pointer at the buzzer. He was double teamed and off balance, hit the three-pointer to send this game into overtime. He has hit five of six from the free throw line. Now six of seven and Vanderbilt leads by three. Now right now Pittsburgh has to do the same thing they did the last time down the court. Good patience, make sure they get the shot. Hey, if they can bring it inside to Charles Smith or to Lane, why not? There's still plenty of time to play basketball. Sean Miller has not shot much today, but mostly the playmaker. Gore, who can play both forward and guard, hanging in the perimeter, hit a three-pointer just a moment ago, goes for another three, not this time, and it's into the hands of Eric Reed of Vanderbilt, and the Commodores, with a three-point lead, and a minute to go, will take their time. Absolutely, they'll try to milk the clock. I would expect CM Newton wanting this team to just get it inside five seconds on that 45-second clock before attempting a shot. The Commodores lost five of their last seven games prior to the tournament and six of their last ten. So they had to turn it on once again in postseason play. Vandy knocked off some powers like North Carolina, Kentucky, and Florida this year. This is their third trip to the NCAA tournament and the clock now running down to eight seconds. Goheen with five seconds to go. The open man is Booker and Booker is fouled. They, it worked out absolutely perfect for CM Newton. Mitt Miller picking up that foul with two seconds left on the 45 second clock. Barry Booker, who has hit a few three point baskets of his own, and CM Newton, the SEC Coach of the Year, and Paul Evans now has to find the answer. And it was Pittsburgh who failed to get past the second round when they lost to Oklahoma last year, trying to get over that hurdle this year. They very nearly had it in regulation until this final shot by Barry Goheen, Billy. The, the beauty of what Goheen does here is he realizes he can't make a pass. He's got to take the responsibility on his own shoulders and try and force this shot up. Two Pittsburgh defenders, absolutely perfect defense, but a great shot. Now, defensively, you have to think if they make these two field foul shots, or even if they're missed, they would like, they might look to go to a good pressure defense at this point, trying to eliminate that three pass, the three point shot by the Pittsburgh Panthers. Will Perdue, the big man for Vanderbilt, their leading scorer, shooter, rebounder, top player in the SEC, foul out. There he is now, and the. Burden in the inside falls to Frank Cornett, and if Vanderbilt can win this game with Purdue on the sidelines, it would be a great achievement for them. You know Will Purdue walking to the sidelines said, this is the end of my college career, and how quickly and how zany this game of basketball is, you never know what's going to happen. The story, Vanderbilt has one timeout, pit three. The possession arrow favors the Commodores, and here's Barry Booker. This is his first free throw attempt today. 77% from the line on the year. And you know, you talk about last games. Charles Smith has to be thinking of the same thing on the other side for Pitt. Uh, 
And he's had a great basketball game out here, being able to play so long with four fouls. He got an early foul trouble with three. Hung in there. But Booker one out of two. Here's Sean Miller. No good. And over the top is Smith. And that'll be his fifth foul. And he's gone. And very earnestly now, Charles Smith may be looking at his last collegiate game. If that's number five, and it is, he will have fouled out. Charles Smith has fouled out as the all-time leading scorer in Pitt basketball history. 21 points and 10 rebounds today, and he gets a well-deserved standing ovation. What a career. Four years at Pittsburgh, rejuvenated the whole basketball program, and has been able to lift it to this level almost single-handedly. A four-point lead for Vanderbilt with 12 seconds to go. And Vandy will be shooting one and one here. And with 12 seconds to go, a chance to ice this game. Bobby Martin, the freshman, replaces him. C.M. Newton, twice coach of the year at Alabama, SEC coach of the year. 19 of his 31 years as a coach, C.M. Newton have been spent in the Southeastern Conference. Started out coaching in Transylvania. Just, you know, he's such a class human being, but we still have a chance here. Barnett missed the front end of the one-on-one -on -one lane, going for three. Loose ball, and it's into the hands of Goheen. Three seconds to go, and a foul is called, but it's going to be Vanderbilt to advance. The Commodores, who are tied for fourth in the Southeastern Conference. Disappointment for Paul Evans as Pitt with a three-point lead and four seconds to go. Saw this game go into overtime, and Vanderbilt dominated by scoring the first six points of this overtime session, even with their star, Will Purdue, on the bench. And Vanderbilt, the seventh seed, will advance to Pontiac, Michigan. And C.M. Newton, who played on a Kentucky championship team 37 years ago, will lead his team to Pontiac in the Midwest semifinals on Friday. weekend for the Big East. Syracuse eliminated yesterday, and Georgetown and Pitt go by the boards this afternoon, Bill. Well, it falls upon going over then, and Seton Hall to do well, and of course Seton Hall has quite a matchup playing against Arizona. That's it. Vanderbilt has won. The Vanderbilt Commodores have defeated Pittsburgh 80-74. to Last game for Charles Smith. Disappointment for the Panthers. 22 for Barry Goheen, the leading scorer, the guy that sent it into overtime. Purdue had 15 before he fouled out. 21 for Charles Smith, the pit, and a great 23 rebound effort by Jerome Lane. Thank you very much, Bill Cunningham. Vanderbilt has won the final score. Commodores 80, the Panthers 74. And right now, let's go to Jim Nance in our New York studio. All right, Dick Stockton, so Pittsburgh becomes the highest-seeded team eliminated from the tournament. A two-seed is out. Now let's talk about Chevy MVPs. For Vanderbilt, Will Perdue, the center. He did not play in the overtime, which makes the win even that much more impressive. And Darrell Porter for Pittsburgh. So Vanderbilt advances. This becomes a Cinderella team. And with that big-footed center, Will Perdue, they can order up the glass slipper now at Vanderbilt in size 21-7A. <laughs> this team is advancing to the Sweet 16, James. Sounds a little like Bob Lanier with the big foot there. But, Jimmy, I'm a big proponent of having this extremely good guard play in tournament time. Again, the freshman player really didn't come through like Pittsburgh needed. Georgia Tech is coming back on Richmond. Closing seconds in Hartford. Let's join Brent and Billy for the finish of this exciting game. Welcome back to the Hartford Civic Center. Congratulations to Vanderbilt. Here we have a Donnybrook unfolding too. And now four of the six teams from the Big East have been eliminated in this NCAA tournament. Georgia Tech has struggled all afternoon. They trail Richmond in the blue jerseys by three with 48 seconds remaining. I'm Brent Musburger with Billy Packer. Billy, Georgia Tech must foul a lot away, hope for a break. They've got some great three-point shooters on the floor and they break Wolfolk. Brilliantly devised play by Richmond during the timeout. Scott comes up. It's a three-point shot by Scott. And now it's a two-point lead with 32 seconds to go. Got a foul. They've got a foul. 
and they put him on the line with 28 seconds to go. I think Oliver, he's got four fouls on him, but that makes no difference. You've got to sacrifice yourself in a situation like this. Dick Tarrant went long, and that's something that a, a lot of coaches do use, but it was a perfect pass, and Wolfhawk, of course, can take it all the way. Billy, we have a lot of new fans with us right now for the end of this game. A little bit of an overview on what we've seen here with Georgia Tech and Richmond. Well, we've seen a great defense in the first half by uh, Richmond. They just kept Georgia Tech at bay. Georgia Tech only had 18 points at halftime, could not score. It's a three-point lead. Taylor is 96% from the line. Why they were reluctant to foul him down at the other end. He scored the last seven points in the CAA championship tournament this year. Kind of cool. And Richmond, the team which eliminated Bob Knight in Indiana, now is on the verge of going down to New Jersey in the regional final. 25 seconds, they up should, by four, and Georgia Tech must hurry. They should go for two here, not three. And Scott goes for the three. That hit the underneath part of the basket. Nobody saw it. I think, Brent, when you're down four, you should go for a two-point play and not worry about hitting another three. Take it to the hoop inside to Hammonds. Oliver missing. Wolfolk, who has been a standout all game long. How about the Richmond Spiders? You see Dick Tarrant using a defensive team and an offensive team. He's been a masterful coach in this tournament. As he said, this was his final four. Do you think he believes it now, Brent, that he can't go any further? He said at the top of the broadcast, in case you missed it, I would just like to get to the Meadowlands. I would consider that the final four. We're not big enough, we're not deep enough, and we're not good enough to get to Kansas City. He has now changed his mind, <laughs> as you pointed out, Billy. One more tournament. Oh! The Rock is up. Knocked out of bounds, Richmond's ball. That should do it. The smallest score left in the tournament is about to eliminate Georgia Tech after having knocked out Bob Knight and Indiana last year's champion. 2,700 students down in Richmond of the Colonial Association, and it is so nice to see the Atlantic 10 and the Colonial come alive here at tournament time. The crowd chanting Sweet 16 in the background, and how sweet that music is to that coach's ears. You know, Dick Turn is now 5-2, Brent, in NCAA tournament play as a head coach at Richmond. That's pretty strong. This has been a great Sunday. Temple started off with a victory. Then in overtime, Vanderbilt upsets Pittsburgh. Now Kentucky has beaten Maryland. Kentucky in that southeast will play the winner of the Villanova-Illinois game. Vandy will go against the winner of Kansas-Murray State. Here it'll be Richmond going down to play Temple. Already Duke and Rhode Island there in the east. Farrell's three out there, and Richmond advances. Jim Nance and James Brown. The question is, how many Cinderella's can fit into a glass slipper? Let's send you back now to Jim and James in New York City. 
All right, Brett, well, that's two within a span of about five minutes, and that's what makes this tournament so great, JB, as we see in this five-minute span, the highest team eliminated to this point, a two-seed in Pittsburgh, and the lowest seed to advance to the Sweet 16, Richmond, a 13 seed in the, ant in the East, is advancing on now to the Meadowlands. Let's talk about the Chevy MVPs from this ball game for Richmond. Pete Wolfolk with a career-high 28 points, and Dennis Scott for Georgia Tech. So let's show you what the East situation looks like now. The Meadowlands is set. It's Temple against Richmond, Rhode Island against Duke. You know, going into the tournament, it was said that the East was the most difficult of all four regions. It's really been a horror show for some of the Giants that were set out in the East with an 11th seed and a 13th seed advancing now to East Rutherford. The East is rated R with Richmond and Rhode Island. And we will continue with our coverage on the road to the Final Four in just a moment. The only way to travel is Cadillac style. For 1988, Cadillac introduces a new, larger, more powerful V8, exclusive to DeVille, Fleetwood, Seville, and El Dorado. Let's go, let's live, let's love every mile. The only way to travel is Cadillac style. Cadillac, Cadillac, Cadillac style. Cadillac, Cadillac, Cadillac style. How's it going? People that sold me our phone system four months ago just made it obsolete with a new one. No kidding. Does Walsh know about this? He wants to see me after lunch. Good luck. 